Hello cloud gurus, we're back. It's the second episode of Kubernetes this month. So I'm Nigel Poulton and I'm about to bring you up to speed with what's going on in the Kubernetes world. We'll do the same as last time, a quick catch up on what I think are the most interesting announcements. Then we'll dive a bit deeper and we'll finish up with our Guru of the Month segment where we'll announce our very first Kubernetes Guru of the Month winner. We'll also release our next Guru of the Month question. So as always, grab a seat and enjoy. Starting out with project related stuff. Happy birthday Kubernetes. On the 6th of June, Kubernetes turned five. I can't believe it's been that long. I guess time flies when you're having fun. Anyway, pretty much two weeks later, we got Kubernetes 1.15. More on that later, but spoiler alert, it's all about stability again. KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in China just finished and more than 3000 people attended, so great job there. Minikube, the popular way to run Kubernetes on your laptop, gets a 1.2 release. And for me, after what felt like for freaking ever in 0 dot something releases, we're now getting a bunch of 1 dot releases. So great work going on there, though Windows support is still experimental. Apple has become the 18th platinum member of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We've got an announcement from the CNCF that if you're a certified Kubernetes administrator or if you're planning on becoming one, then good news, your certification is going to last for three years instead of two more partying. Slightly crappier news, another high severity vulnerability, this time in kubectl, the Kubernetes command line tool. Now, I'm not going to go into this because security alerts are just part of modern life. I will say though that Kubernetes has exploded in size as a project and at a rapid clip, so expect security alerts and be sure to be on the latest recommended versions. Switching away from the main project and into the wider community, the Istio service mesh gets a 1.2 release. HA Proxy 2.0 is here and it's got some serious Kubernetes ingress love thrown in. And finally, for this time around, Docker Desktop. The popular way to run Docker and Kubernetes on your laptop is getting a pretty major behind the scenes improvement. So that's our catch up for this month. Time for a bit of a deeper dive. In this month's deeper dive section, we'll pick up on three things. Kubernetes 1.15, HA Proxy 2.0, and Docker Desktop. Since forever, Kubernetes has been a relentless barrage of new stuff that we need to learn and deploy, and it's not been for the faint-hearted. But I think we mentioned last month that the last couple of releases have really bucked that trend, and it's a good thing. I mean, not only do we as practitioners get a break from that steeper than steep brain-busting learning curve, but customers also have a fighting chance of implementing something with a semblance of stability. Anyway, Kubernetes 1.15 was pretty much 25 feature enhancements and improvements, so nothing brand new, and the major enhancements and improvements were all around CRDs or custom resource definitions, which are a way to extend the Kubernetes API with your own objects. Fabulous, that's great, but I want to mention something super important, but kind of hidden away a bit in the release notes, and that's feature deprecation. So yes, Kubernetes 1.15 is here, but with half an eye on the 1.16 release, which is probably about three months away, we need to be aware that a bunch of deprecated stuff is going to stop working when that lands. And it's stuff that a lot of us will probably be using. Now, I'm not going to list them all here, go check the release notes, but for example, Deployment, replica sets, daemon sets, and stateful sets, if you're provisioning them from the extensions v1 beta 1, or the apps v1 beta 1, or the apps v1 beta 2 API subgroups, those are gonna stop working. So be aware and start planning. I mean, an idea might be to do some testing now with a runtime config flag on any 1.15 clusters you have. That way, you can test disabling some of these and see whether you're affected while you've got a relatively simple way of turning things back on. On to HA Proxy 2.0. If you're doing Kubernetes ingress, and I imagine most of you are, then HA Proxy just did you a huge favor. In the brand new, still hot out of the oven 2.0 release, you get a Kubernetes ingress controller that'll support TLS offloading and layer seven routing, so host and path-based routing, but also rate limiting and whitelisting. So 
as Kubernetes ingress itself inches and creeps ever closer to that seemingly elusive GA milestone, HAProxy steps up to the plate with major support. And for our final thing in this month's deep dive section, Docker Desktop. I'm mentioning Docker Desktop here because I know a lot of us use it on our Mac and Windows laptop for that one-click Kubernetes development cluster. Oh, the simplicity. Well, July is gonna see a public preview of Docker Desktop leveraging WSL2 on Windows 10. So what's WSL? Fair question. WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux, and it's all about running Linux workloads on your Windows 10 laptops. Now, the 1.whatever releases of WSL emulated Linux, but the 2.0 releases are gonna run an actual Linux kernel in a lightweight VM. Ooh, but why would you care? I mean, it sounds like implementation detail, yeah? Well, yeah, it's gonna be faster and all of that jazz, but more interestingly, it'll work on Windows 10 Home Edition, so not just professional, but also, because Docker and Kubernetes will run inside the WSL VM, alongside any other Linux programs that you're running or developing, it means they'll all have tighter integration, which is great for development and integration testing. And speaking of great, let's finish off with our Guru of the Month segment. Last week's question was basically which newish Kubernetes feature lets you specify a particular runtime as part of a pod spec? And the answer, of course, was the runtime class object. A special thanks to those of you who admitted to Googling the answer. I love your honesty. But as this is the first ever Kubernetes Guru of the Month winner, I handpicked the winner. So, drum roll. I hope you're on the edge of your seats if you entered. And the winner is... Walid Shari, a cloud native advocate from Saudi Arabia. While there were many great answers, Walid's response was well structured and clearly explained. Plus, you got bonus points for referencing source documentation. So, Walid, you'll be getting a swag bag from us. And of course, well done in getting the correct answer. This month's question is in the link below. And if you know the answer, get involved. We really appreciate it. And on that note, I'll see you next month. Same cube time same cube place.